this is the motherboard we're going to be looking at today. But first, I wanted to go over who this board is for, because it's not for everyone. So this board is about $50, and it uses socket 2011. So, X79 CPUs. This means all the i7s, all the E5 Xeons. Now this is really important because these cheap Chinese boards, they don't have any sort of voltage control. So you need to really look at some of these CPUs and go for the mix of highest clock speed and most amount of cores you can find. And obviously prioritizing clock speed first. But this is the really cool part about these CPUs. These things are like super cheap. So here we have an E5 2640. So it's six cores at 2.5 gigahertz and boosts at 3.0, but it's like $16. It, it's crazy cheap. But here's the thing to remember is that first gen Ryzen is still a thing. And if you get the parts used, they are also stupid cheap. So here we have a 1600X for about $100 and a really nice X370 board for about $70. And with DDR4 pricing going way, way down, and these boards don't have the best DDR4 overclocking anyway, it, it'll just run circles around that 2640 I just mentioned. So these boards are for someone on a low budget. Like we're talking like $250, $300 for a entire build sort of budget. So after saying all this, let's just get into the board. Let's see what we get for our 50 bucks. In the box, we have an IO shield, two SATA cables, universal CPU bracket with some clips. This board doesn't come with a BIOS battery, and this is pretty common with these Chinese boards. So you're gonna have to provide your own. This board also doesn't have any USB 3. We got six USB 2.0 ports and pretty bare bones rear IO. This board does only have two DIMM slots, and this actually hurts these old X79 CPUs more than you would think. And we have one full-length PCIe 16X slot. The Southbridge heatsink is pretty nicely finished, but I would have rather seen a cheap aluminum heatsink with more surface area, as it'd probably cost about the same. So for the VRM heatsink, we do have a lightweight heatsink with a lot of surface area, but that doesn't matter all that much because these boards don't support overclocking, and even the heatsinks that are just blocks are good enough. But this is nice to see, because it's always welcome to have more surface area than not enough. Here's the BIOS, and it's pretty bare bones, pretty basic. This is kind of what you get with these Chinese boards. So the things you want to do is go to advanced, performance tuning, and just set your memory speeds. Now something you should be aware of, there is no voltage control, and these are the only timings you actually have access to. So these are all your basic timings. Something else you should probably do is under CPU configuration, and then if we go to power management, we can actually set the turbo boost. If you just set all your power limits on your turbo boost, this is just gonna make sure that your turbo lasts longer so it, it stays at a higher clock speed. Basically, you wanna get as much as you can out of this CPU as you can, because if you can't overclock it, you have to do everything else you can to actually get some performance out of it. And that's pretty much the BIOS. Now, one thing I should tell you guys about is I had three of these boards and of the three, one of them would not boot anything until I, I manually set the actual boot settings. So I had to come down here to CMS and it was already set like this. So what I had to do is change it. So in my case, I just changed it UEFI only. And then I just exited the BIOS, saved, came back in, changed it back and everything was fine. Uh, before that, nothing would boot anything, so there must have been something up with the BIOS settings. I'm not really sure. The other boards I got, they don't have this issue, but if you are getting like this kind of Chinese board here, you really want to check that if your board doesn't boot. it save you a lot of hassle trying to return it. But other than that, that's pretty much everything you need to know about the BIOS. So I just wanted to show you guys the CPU Z info because the last Chinese board I checked out it was kind of weird with the chipset. It was using some strange chipset. So yeah, this is using a H61, which should be the gen of the 2600K. I think that was Sandy Bridge. Yeah, if I remember right, H61 is like Sandy Bridge. That's nice, but it's still not the correct chipset. So yeah. That's a little awkward. 
but that's pretty much normal on these Chinese boards. They just slap whatever cheapest chips that they can and make it work. Uh, what is different about this board, it actually shows up for manufacturer and model number. So it's a Hunan Z High X79-4M, revision 1.3. So that's nice. The last Chinese board I checked out, it was just blank, blank, and then it had, you know, the Southbridge info. So that's kind of cool. And in case there is any question, yes, it's in dual channel mode. If there's only two dim slots, it's in dual channel mode. Like I said at the beginning of the video, these boards are not for everyone. And if your budget is $100 to $150 for a CPU and a motherboard, you're better off just going with X370 and a used Ryzen first gen CPU. You're going to get much more performance, newer feature sets, and just overall better system. But if you're looking for a super cheap build, less than $300 sort of build, these boards are a pretty good deal. You just have to watch which CPU you're putting in these things. So if you like this video, please consider giving it a like, commenting down below, or subscribing. Until next time, bye.